Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Nancy Pelosi and the leadership of the Democrats in the House of Representatives just released the new updated Heroes Act. I'm going to go through my first look of these impressions. I've only had my hands on this for about 10 minutes, but it's 80 pages long. It's actually 87 pages long and there's a lot to cover here. We've got stimulus checks, unemployment, a lot of good things. And this is the proposal that we actually expect to get bipartisan support. This isn't just another one of those throwaway proposals that some minority, you know, individual passed or or proposed and it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be dead on arrival. We are expecting Nancy Pelosi and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin to duke this out, agree on this verbally, pass it in the House, pass it in the Senate, and then the president to sign it. We'll see exactly how that goes. But first, let's see what's inside of this. I'm going to pull this up. While I pull this up, remember to get two free stocks with Weeble. You deposit $100, they give you two free stocks worth up to $1,600. And we're in a pandemic, but you could still get life insurance on your phone, and my flashlight's on, in as little as five minutes. You could Apple Pay or Android Pay for it. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into this. This is super exciting. So $10 billion for the SNAP program, additional funding for SNAP. We've got $400 million for women, infants, and to children. Additional food aid throughout here. Then we've got $21 billion going to states, territories, and tribes to address the ongoing needs of homeowners struggling to afford their housing. So there'll be renter's assistance coming as well, but this is actually $21 billion going to homeowners. $238 billion going to states. $179 billion going to a local relief. If we add this together here, because this has always been a, been a huge stumbling block that Democrats have wanted over $950 billion. And right now they are cutting this aid down to $417 billion. That's actually less than what the Problem Solvers Caucus proposal was. We've got $3.6 billion going to elections. Then we have $208 billion going to schools. That's almost twice what we had previously expected. $208 billion going to schools. Previously, Democrats and uh, Republicans had agreed on $105 billion. What do we got over here? We've got $750 million going to the World Food Program at the United Nations. Stimulus checks are coming. One sec. We're just going in order here. $2.4 billion going to Amtrak. 13.5 going to airports and the FAA. There's more money also going to uh, the airlines in just one sec, but we've got transit emergency relief here of $32 billion. We've got emergency rental assistance. Here we go. So we actually have $50 billion going to help low income renters at risk of homelessness uh, and, and to avoid eviction. $50 billion to help people avoid evictions. That's incredible. Uh, no definitions yet on low income here. Then we've got extending the length of borrower, re borrower relief for student loan payments through September 30th, 2021. That's like another year extension, although they did push it to the end of the year. So it's another nine month extension. Uh, federal student loan payments being deferred all the way through September 30th, 2021. We've got the PPP and EIDL Enhancement Act. It looks like they're going to set aside 10% of the leftover PPP money for people who have not yet gotten PPP loans if you have 10 or fewer employees and for loans less than $250,000 as long as you're located in an LMI area, which I believe that's low to moderate income. And then they will have 50% of remaining and future funding for a second PPP loan for businesses with less than 200 employees and a 25% reduction in revenue year over year. So in order to double dip on the PPP, your income would had to have gone down uh, by that 25%. The modifications to the EIDL, I didn't see anything super exciting there yet, so I'm going to skip that for a moment, and we'll come back to that in a future video. Okay, economic stimulus, $1,200 stimulus check, some very big changes here. We've got $500 to all dependents, which includes full-time students and adult dependents that can receive this $500 in this next round. Nothing about a retroactive $500 though. So just going forward, $500 for dependents, $1,200 for individual filers with the same income thresholds as last time. However, rather than having to have a social security number, this proposal suggests that you only need a taxpayer identification number. That does mean that if you are undocumented, but you have a TIN and you pay taxes, you could be eligible. Also, they are preventing these payments from being held up due to child support that is past due and the credit is prevented from any kind of garnishments from banks, 
bankruptcy, any, any form of insolvency or any of the other things in this paragraph here. The information will be based on 2018-19 tax returns. Additionally, the Treasury shall issue advance payments for Social Security, old age, survivors, and disability insurance beneficiaries, supplemental security income recipients, railroad retirement board beneficiaries, and VA beneficiaries who did not file taxes in 2018 or 19 based on information provided to the SSA or the other departments. Then we've got a few changes on the earned income tax credit, which we'll circle back to when I have more information on it. We've got $600 on pandemic unemployment compensation. So unemployment, $600 per week, starting the week of September 6th, so that means there would be some retroactive pay, and ending January 20, uh, 31st, 2021. That would be after a new president or potentially Trump gets reelected, uh, but there will be a new Congress, so that's why they're doing uh, January 31st instead of December. Uh, okay, good. What else do we have here? So then uh, the rest is mostly definitions, a little bit more information here. We've got emergency rental assistance, just some more details on the $50 billion in rental assistance to help rental property. Oh, this is interesting. This section would provide uh, $50 billion to help renters pay rent and utility bills and help rental property owners of all sizes continue to cover their costs. So this actually also includes... Uh, landlords and the homeowner assistance fund of $21 billion to for homeowners struggling to afford and this would be for mortgage payments property taxes or other so that's interesting so if you took forbearance you'd actually maybe be able to dip into that fund and pay off what you owed during forbearance this is huge promoting access to credit. I mean, there's so much to read here. It's going to take hours to go through all of this, but this is a good first look. Protecting renters and homeowners from evictions and foreclosures. This section extends and expands the eviction moratorium and foreclosure and CARES. Wow. Uh, improves the forbearance provided under CARES Act. Oh, golly. Okay, good. So these are going to be really good terms. We don't have all the details yet. But uh, okay, wow, a lot to go through here, folks. I'm going to keep digging through this. If you want more detailed information on this, make sure to subscribe. I'll be doing a full flowchart breakdown on all of this. Really appreciate your support on, uh, you know, I'm trying to do everything I can to get this information to you as soon as possible. Uh, check out the Weeble link, the life insurance link, and of course, make sure to check out the programs as well. That coupon code expires tomorrow. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm excited.